project that I'm working on is basically a response to the hurricane that came through Ambler's campus. Um, it utilizes the wood that was reclaimed from the um, from, from the trees that fell down, and they chopped it up, and now we're basically using it in our project. Um, it is the name of it is the tree house. Basically, it started off as just this big trunk that comes out of the ground that's supposed to mimic, um, you know, just any of the bare trees that are around campus now since the tornado ripped through them. Um, and then holes are drilled through so that way animals can get in and uh, it's basically used as a habitat for animals. Um, we had to make a lot of altercations to it uh, because it would be very hard to, you know, construct this, bring, even move this log anywhere. Um, so basically we took what the wood, like slices of wood, of the reclaimed wood that we were given and we're basically setting them up in like a circle. So it's going around like a, it's, it's, like, it's like a tree trunk now, like a big log, but then there's like slices through it. So it looks pretty cool and like animals will be able to get into it. Um, we have like this whole structure thing that we've been working on that'll like hold it up and keep it, uh, keep it safe, keep it from falling down. It started in like the very beginning of spring, like February, I think, something like that. Yeah, so uh, originally um, we designed it for one specific animal and I chose the frog. Um, at first I was just going to do like a small stump that was maybe like a foot tall out of the ground and like a frog could like, you know, carve it out the same way. The frog would like go in and do whatever frogs do. Um, one purpose, uh, we were going to put a light in the middle actually um, and it was going to draw lantern flies and the frogs would go in and eat the lantern fr flies. Um, we ended up not doing the light. Uh, but we also ended up noticing that this could be used for more than just frogs. It could be any animal that wanted to. Um, right now, I think birds is probably going to be the most popular um, because it goes. It's, right now, it's like 12 feet high in some parts. So, um, birds. I mean, bugs. Of course, it was originally designed for bugs and then to draw frogs to eat bugs. Um, and then on the bottom, there's like space for groundhogs, frogs, snakes, anything. It was a smaller scale, and you could also be a lot more, maybe like adventurous, because like you know, if you're making a building and you have like a ledge, you need a railing, you know, you need like safety measures. But for this, they're animals. Um, it's also very like the one thing I liked about this project is we kept it open ended with the animals that are using it. Like I don't know what's going to use it. It could be a squirrel. It could be birds. Maybe the birds come and no squirrels use it because they're scared of the birds. You know. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens. Well, you know, if you look at my the project I had at the very beginning and the project that we came up with, was completely different. I mean, the, the concept's still there, but you know, when you actually get into the details of how to construct something, um, you know, things are going to change, and that's definitely something I learned a lot. And you know, it's now when I design, I'm going to think more about how it needs to be constructed. I think it's pretty cool, you know, it's very unique. Um, I would love to, you know, I've, well, I've been to Ambler like twice before this class and I could definitely see myself coming here a lot more often because, you know, I have a piece of it now. So mine, at first when we were going through, because we designed the original con concept um, and then we broke out into teams in the spring and started figuring out how it would be constructed. Um, I think there were five people in my group, including me, and then uh, here, one of them left because they didn't take this class, um, but we also got two other students from another group. So right now we have six, including me. Um, I am making a habitat for bumblebees. Bumblebees are a specific kind of bees that are currently going extinct and also very important to environment. Um, so my project has two levels, I would say, two different layers. The first part would be the actual hive, and at the top layer would be the ribs, I would call them. Which I don't have them right next to me, but um, these ribs would allow flowers and other kinds of plants to grow over it and attract the bees to their new home. My sculpture will be located actually right outside this building. 
and the sun where bumblebees are more um, attracted to flowers and different kind of plants. So when I first started this project, it was I was trying to, as I said, um, figure out how I can make a habitat for bumblebees that they would use, but also give them some kind of privacy, considering that these kind of bees like to be in dark spaces more than um, in public spaces where they can have people interacting with them and all that. So in, at first, um, I made these triangles that fit perfectly with each other, it's shown right here. They have perfect angles and everything, but once we started making it, we figured out that these perfect angles were not going to be so perfect and it was impossible to put them together. So I feel like the, the most important thing that we had to focus on was to actually visualize it and understand that this was not going to be as perfect as, as it is in softwares because in softwares obviously everything goes together all the pieces will be floating in the air so it just seems like everything works together so that was the most important part and then another part that we had to focus here was um, the ribs that they were not I just didn't consider the fact that they don't really go perfect on the ground like you have to keep them um, attached to something that keeps them on um, flowing on so I think that what um, the process that we followed was that we made, well I made the design and then nothing I had to focus on was how to build it. And we made all these extra pieces, we included a hand, we, we included all these other pieces that we thought would work and then once we got here we were like, hold on, like, these don't actually work. So we had to go back to my basic project what we first started with and just kind of go as we build and figure out how everything would work and that's where we are right now. <laughs> well, for me, I thought it was very important to actually understand how, how um, I guess this is not a building but it's kind of a similar thing, to understand how construction is actually done. Like for me, it's the first time that I build with wood or actually cut wood. So I thought it was very interesting to see like how everything evolves from a basic design that it's done through computers to actually building it and just understanding that not everything will go together <laughs> as planned. I think it again it, it's very important to understand how everything goes because just when it's done on paper you don't really understand it like all the pieces won't really make sense. I'm really excited just to see what how it would turn out and actually um, having bumblebees hopefully use it and help the environment overall considering the bumblebees are very important to environment and flowers and plants. So um, we're working currently on uh, Melody which is basically um, a wild uh, wildlife installation for um, the wood thrush which is actually a species here at Ambler that is going to be extinct uh, uh, if not taken care of uh, soon. Um, so basically we used architectural form to amplify the song, the beautiful song of the wood thrush. So in the spring when we uh, were coming up with the conceptual uh, models and ideas of what this would look like, um, we thought of different forms uh, that would amplify uh, the wood thrush's beautiful song um, and then at the end of the spring semester we came up with the final funnel form um, and then after that we experimented with different uh, basket weaving techniques um, and that really allowed us to get a more hands-on experience uh, with how uh, material and form actually come together. Um, and then now with the design build course, when we're like actually building all of it, it's actually super exciting because um, you're going from 3D modeling, like digital modeling, and now you're actually building it. And I think that um, actually uh, being hands-on and uh, using these materials with your own hands and seeing how, they, how the materials join uh, really helps because you wouldn't know how to join um, these materials in the digital world. So I feel like that's an important component about architecture itself.
So I, um, I decided to join the uh, Temple University's Master's of Architecture program and then the Design Build course because that is actually something that uh, is important to uh, your professional career. You need to learn how to uh, put different materials together, learn joinery, craftsmanship, um, aside from digital skills such as 3D modeling and technical drawings. Um, the technical drawings will only take you so far. Uh, you need to know how to build it thereafter. So I feel like this course has definitely allowed me to really grow as a professional and learn how to um, actually build things after I draw them. The fact that this will be built um, on campus, on Amherst campus, means everything. Um, to see our work finally being realized onto the Ambler campus grounds, uh, be a, and it'll be a part of uh, the Ambler campus experience is everything. Um, I can't wait to see um, uh, visitors using the, and actually going around and looking at our installation. Um, my journey to architecture has been a long one. So when I was younger, um, my parents uh, had just immigrated to uh, the U.S. from the Dominican Republic, so we didn't have um, the money to buy Barbie Dream houses. So I made my own out of cardboard boxes, um, and I just kept doing that until um, like my teenage years. And then once in a, once I was into high school, I created my own uh, wire sculptures that even got exhibited and auctioned off. Um, and then now I'm here at Temple and I'm seeing how all these skills that I've met, um, created and used throughout my childhood and teenage years have you know, manifested up until now. The fact that um, this is the 4 plus 1 program and that we have this uh, opportunity to do our masters in such a, sh a short amount of time um, is actually very beneficial because after this uh, year and a half of our masters, we can essentially go off, start working and also uh, get our license, which is very important.